in this video i am going to give my insights on clearing upsc civil service preliminary examination so for those who haven't heard about this exam union public service commission of india conducts an annual exam to take candidates into the higher civil service post of government of india one of the most competitive exams in the country and um, around 13 lakh candidates appeared for this exam in year 2 2023 uh, for a vacancy of 1255 so you can imagine the level of competition uh, for this exam so i'll be focusing on mainly the preliminary part of this examination uh, but before going into the details of what to do to clear preliminary examination i would like to discuss some of the most common mistakes candidates do while preparing for this examination. So the first common mistake the candidates do while preparing for this examination is focusing on preliminary examination alone. So this examination happens in three phases. For those who are not familiar with this exam, there is a preliminary examination, then a mains examination and an interview. So Preliminary examination works like a qualifying examination for UPSC civil service examination. Once you clear preliminary, you will be eligible to write the mains examination. And in the mains examination, around 10,000 candidates uh, qualify. And out of that 10,000 people, only one third of the students qualify to appear for the interview. And in those number of candidates, only around 1,200 as you said, as you as the number of vacancies available only around 1000 candidates make it to the final rank list so it happens in three phases and one of the biggest mistake candidates do is once they find the preliminary examination can be really tough they focus their entire energy uh, the the huge portion of their exam preparation will be spent on preliminary examination alone so this is like planning to fail for this examination if you spend most of your time on preliminary examination preparation i would say it is most likely that even if you clear the preliminary exam examination you would fail for the mains examination if you think that you can you will start preparing for the mains examination after the preliminary examination is over and in between the time you get for the preliminary and mains examination um, sorry to say it is really small time um, it is not enough to prepare well for the mains examination i'm not saying uh, there are no students who have manage to clear the mains examination during that time interval but it is highly unlikely it's better to prepare start preparing uh, for the mains and optional paper especially the optional paper right from the beginning of your preparation stage so this is the first common mistake everyone do so i i would like to emphasize once more you should your preliminary examination preparation and mains examination preparation should happen simultaneously it should go um, hand in hand and only then it will be an efficient way of studying Other, otherwise you uh, there will be a lot of redundancy i will explain why that happened why so uh, why there is redundancy and why it is inefficient way of studying um, while discussing the syllabus of both these examination so this is the first common mistake everyone do then the next one will be Ignoring the importance of current affairs and newspaper. So, in this UPSC civil service exam, a candidate is expected to be familiar with what is happening around him, especially of events of especially events of national importance. So, they are expected to uh, be familiar with events happening inside their nation and major events that are happening um, all around the world also so once you go through the syllabus you will you will understand which all uh, domains um, are the focus areas and 
in which all area you should uh, while reading the newspaper which all area you should focus and prioritize uh, i will discuss the syllabus very soon so then you will understand but uh, what happens usually is uh, the candidates ignore the importance of current affairs and they focus on the static portion of this exam especially on the books uh, and um, they don't develop a good habit of reading newspaper daily in a very short time frame so once you start doing that when when a few months pass and when you are near to the exam the only uh, option left for the candidate will be to depend on the summaries that are provided by these coaching institutes that's a very poor way of uh, learning and understanding the current affairs topics that 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 was happening while he was focusing on um, books and static portion so multiple problems happens uh, if you do uh, if you follow that strategy first one is uh, every candidate um, if if they um, in the strategy if they plan to uh, re complete the newspaper in the morning itself in uh, or evening um, in a short time frame say one or two hours if they uh, plan to read the entire newspaper and um, analyze it and make notes from it if they plan to complete the entire thing in a very short time frame in the strategy uh, that will benefit in multiple ways for the candidates uh, it's like the the comprehend comprehension skill increases their analyzing skill increases while making notes their um, their uh, skill to put their thoughts and ideas into into words increases which is very much needed for the mains examination so that uh, all those are very important in uh, different stages of the exam so um, uh, you shouldn't sp uh, skip reading newspaper regularly and making notes uh, making notes of important events uh happening around you so and you will see why current affairs reading newspaper is a very big important part in preparing preliminary examination uh, also later in this video so uh um, for preparing mains also you need notes you need to uh, th there is there is a certain way you should prepare the notes and um, say file it for later usage so um, um, i will discuss that on a later video if there is a demand on preparing how to prepare for mains examination so th that is one thing and then um, so if you uh, constantly have a habit of reading the newspaper making notes um, uh, going through the figures uh, uh, the uh, the data figures um, say like maternal mortality rate the growth rate the gdp growth rate uh, um, when it comes to economics or uh, so the some figures connected to crime crime uh, uh, crime rate some um, figures connected to um, uh, say uh, um gdp grow uh, um, uh, export import figures uh, something uh, all these if you go through these figures multiple times throughout your preparation while making notes from current affairs you will definitely remember those uh, f figures and you will be able to reproduce those figures while writing for the mains examination so but if you f if you think that okay these are not much important like you will uh, depend on the summary notes prepared by the coaching institute at the end of that uh, and uh, while uh, after the preliminary examination and um, be, uh, while preparing for the mains examination in that time what will happen is it will be uh, you will be you will not be able to uh, recollect all these datas it, it, the the datas you have to recollect is like vast and you it, it will be really hard for you to remember each and every small figures and use those figures in the uh, answers um, which, uh, which is very much important to in improve improve your quality of the answers so so if you um, um, 
have uh, develop a habit of reading these uh, news and making notes uh, from it and go through these data multiple times throughout the year there is a higher chance for you to um, memorize uh, things efficiently and reproduce it when needed so it's an efficient way of uh, studying also so that is one important um, thing you should keep in mind while preparing for the exam never ignore the importance of current affairs and newspaper um, if you if you see all these points come to one uh, kind of learning uh, for this examination a holistic approach for prelims and mains uh, you uh, there is only one way of efficiently learning for this mains examination of course there are candidates who uh, because of their short um time frame or like because of their other um, other problems they have um, they may have very s small time frame and uh, there may be candidates who have cleared this examination in such a manner but if you take a average general candidate it's always better to prepare in this manner for this kind of examination so this is the another common mistake candidates do uh then um the next one is uh, lack of time management so most of the candidates realize this to at a too late late stage only so after once they complete probably in uh, after writing the mains examination only they will realize if they have um, um poor writing skills so to avoid that mistake you should start Uh, as i said earlier um, you should start your mains preparation from the beginning itself from the beginning of your preparation stage itself so that uh, when you make notes um, see whether you are able to complete uh, write, uh, com you are able to write an answer in a short time say if you are able to if you are not able to write a 250 word answer in 10 12, 12 minutes then you have to work on your writing skill by writing skill i mean uh, two things main, mainly uh, how uh, legible uh, you are and two um, uh, how fast you can write yeah there is one more aspect like um, whether you are able to um, uh, write stuffs in uh, write the answer in good english like is your grammar proper if you obviously if you are writing the answers in english if you are choosing any other language for uh, the mains exam papers uh, in that language are you able to uh, write good answer leg legible good answers uh, clear answers i would say uh, the answer sh when when an examiner picks up the paper and evaluates it uh, he should be able to go through the answer very quickly and understand what you have written so that aspect like you, you should be able to uh, write good answers in a very short time and all that uh, make uh, will become possible only if you have good writing skills so um, for mains examination writing skill is of super importance like if if you, even if you are super knowledgeable and if you know everything uh, everything that is in the syllabus like if you are if you if you if given enough time if you are able to um, produce beautiful answers that that, that uh, if you are not able to produce those answers in a short time that becomes totally useless so you should uh, most of the candidates realize this they have realized they have poor writing skills only at a very later stage uh, probably after writing the mains examination in the the real mains examination so Uh, make sure that you are not doing this mistake um, in the initial phase itself see whether you have any problems in writing skills uh, uh, let it be speed or clear writing handwriting uh, whatever it is like from holding the pen also it's important make sure that you are able to uh, sit and write for hours uh in the, in mains examination paper for one examination paper is like 3 hour duration so you you should be able to uh, sit and write for hours um in the for, forenoon session you have to write for 3 hours then in the afternoon session also you have to write for 3 hours so you uh, you should have that um good uh, writing uh, skills uh, to pull that off so uh, make sure you write enough examinations um or enough notes at least uh, to 
see uh, to catch if you have any problems in writing skills and work on it uh, at a earlier stage itself so not realizing the importance of a writing skill is one big common mistake candidates do another one is not um sorry undermining the importance of optional paper so a candidate has multiple choices for optional paper like uh, economics public administration geography mathematics you have a lot of options you can choose one from any of those options you even have languages for optional paper so choose one and make sure that you are comfortable with your optional paper because uh, optional paper there are two optional papers for the mains examination 250 mark e mark each and 500 in those 500 marks scoring a good mark from optional paper itself is very important in having a total good marks for the mains e written examination so make sure that you are comfortable with your optional paper and at any stage if you feel that you selected the wrong optional paper make sure that you switch that optional paper don't do the mistake of sticking to one single optional paper throughout your exam preparation preparation so there is a high chance that highly likely chance that uh, you chose a wrong optional paper you thought that you would do well for that optional paper but while studying and preparing you uh, realize either it is tough or you it is affecting the your exam other exam preparations so in that case definitely do switch the optional paper other uh, make sure that you prepare for this optional paper from the initial stages itself collect the materials uh, make notes write uh, go through the previous uh, previous your papers and make sure that you are able to write good quality answers uh, get uh, check uh, with your peers uh, or um, good uh, good teachers and make sure that the right answers you write for those questions are really good so most uh, that definitely happens while writing mock test for mains examinations but make sure that you prepare for the optional paper well from the initial stages itself so this is one common mistake students do that they undermine the importance of optional paper and they preparing uh, they start preparing well for the optional paper at a very late stage only so don't do this mistake optional paper is of ve uh, very important at least in the current exam pattern optional paper is of very important i am not sure whether they will take away the optional paper but if the current syllabus like pattern continues um, optional paper is of utmost importance so this is one mistake um and another one is ignoring the importance of practice test so i can't stress enough the importance of practice test i often see many candidates ignore this Uh, they focus solely on preparation gaining the knowledge and they never test their knowledge out so before preliminary examination you should uh, you should write multiple mock test for preliminary examination to test your knowledge to test whether you are able to uh, mark the uh, you are comfortable with the mcq type of questions Uh, to test whether you have proper time management so even for preliminary preliminary examination practice tests are very important and even for mains examination you should write multiple uh, practice tests for for all the papers including essay paper general studies paper optional paper you should write as as much mock test as possible uh, you should ensure that you have um uh, proper time management for this exam and then um, even the uh, even uh, the practice test in uh, itself will act like a good um revision uh, for you for the exams and it will also help to identify any area where you need to improve in the last uh, few days um, you will 
you will have a peace of mind um, if you are doing well in practice test also so um, practice tests are very important never ignore that even if you know the subject well even if you are confident that you have prepared well do practice tests a lot of practice tests i even know people who do just practice tests for preliminary examination even if they haven't uh, gone through the static books or current affairs uh, i even know people who have cleared the prelims by just doing lot of mock test and gaining knowledge and speed through practice test i don't recommend that strategy but definitely do lot of practice tests so this is another mistake the candidates do then um, there this uh, this is one of the important points you should keep in mind if you fail this exam unfortunately if you fail this exam once so this is a mistake everyone do they just stick to their initial strategy plan they never critically review uh, they never talk to their peers who have cleared the exam they never talk to their either out of fear or ego or or um, they are just desperate that um it's just they will think that it is just them uh, they should put more work to it uh, towards uh, their strategy then they can clearly um, win probably that is right also but we, uh, we uh, but you shouldn't shy away from critically reviewing reviewing your preparation strategy if you have failed once so i have seen people um work really hard and uh, fail and then uh it, it the the problem might be slight ch um, uh, change they need slight change in focus or priorities or slight change uh, they need they just have to make slight changes um to clear the exam but they uh, they don't do that and they continue uh, doing the same old strategy one uh, which once uh, didn't help them and they continue uh, with that and end up failing again so definitely critically review your preparation strategy uh, if you have failed once so this is another mistake everyone do and then the last one is it's the last but not least you should focus you should not ignore your health i can't emphasize this in a flick you are in for a long preparation uh, study preparation time so you uh, the, there will be huge stress involved Pers you will have personal problems on along the way um, you will have probably financial problems L you you will have lot of issues other than um, the stress that is involved in preparing this much vast syllabus so um, what usually happens is they don't uh, the students don't um, folk um, like they don't give due importance for their health and um, they don't give due importance to the food they eat uh, they don't exercise properly and w um, eventually they will become um, less and less healthy and they will get lethargic and their memory gets affected their sleep gets affected and their overall efficiency goes down drastically so don't do this like spend few minutes a day for uh, slight exercises stretching exercises and cardio exercises do a uh, little bit exercise daily and uh, keep your health uh, uh, keep your health up to day, uh, up to, up to the level uh, and you will need that health um, you should understand that even if once you clear the prelims mains examination happens over few days and it is so exhausting that uh, if you if you don't have good health there is high likely there is a high highly likely chance that you may f uh, get exhausted or fall sick on a one, on one day and your entire mains preparation uh, will go um, bad so Uh, just make sure you have good health um uh, drink proper water um drink good food or eat uh, good food uh, do small exercises and um, it will help you in multiple ways like 
your memory will increase you uh, you uh, you will become less lethargic um you will be more active you will be more happy you will be able to tolerate uh, the stress involved so and even in uh, during the exam you will be able to stay alert and be active or uh, you will be able to sit through the lengthy exams so um make sure your health is fine and whenever you feel that you you are in full of stress take a small take small breaks uh, you have a a, a long um, time ahead of you to prepare like um, i have seen candidates uh, uh, stress out and do very inefficient studies maybe you can finish some topic in say 30 minutes and um, candidates um, won't take breaks and even when they are exhausted they, uh, they w- the same topic they can finish in 30 minutes they sit through hours to complete it what is the use there is no use uh, whenever you feel tired stressed out and you don't uh, feel like studying just take small breaks uh, uh, it will help you uh, improve improve your efficiency or we need efficient studying Uh, you you should you, you shouldn't like burn yourself out um you need to keep your energy high throughout the prepar- preparation time for that you need breaks so that is very important and one important lesson or advice i have for the candidates is you sh- if you feel like you are not enjoying this process if you are if you are not studying with Uh, if there is no fun in studying especially when it comes to upsc exam since the candidates are going through current affairs things of national importance uh, since they are forming opinions about interesting topics uh, writing notes about it being articulate about it uh, since it is the main part of the examination it has it, it is supposed to be interesting and fun so if you ever feel that you are not enjoying the studying process there is something wrong you should stop and analyze it don't stress too much don't think about just the final destination uh, j- just enjoy the journey also you have to be enjoying the studying process some students may feel like i am just um, saying armchair um, ideas and i'm uh, i'm not really being realistic but believe me i have been there so i know the pr- pressure that's on you to clear this exam uh, but uh, as a candidate i am saying after after seeing all these things i am saying you should be enjoying the process you should you should be uh, you should study with Uh, active energy not with a dead mind or like a tired exhausted stressed out mind so that is very important it will help you in um, efficiently studying it, it, it will help you memorize things better it will help you deal with all other problems you have in li- your personal life also so don't um, ruin your health or mental health especially mental health and physical health over this exam it's not going to help you in any way um, it's not even it's going to affect you uh, even it's not it's not going to help and it's going to affect you badly so just keep this point in your mind uh, never ignore the your health uh, both physical and mental health is much needed for this exam preparation so this is the uh, Uh, another mistake this is another mistake candidates do so these are the common mistakes i wanted to discuss the reason why i spent this much time for discussing this common mistakes candidates do uh, is no matter how much guidance or advice i give um, for exam preparation if you are making this mistakes uh, at some point you will fail or at some you will not be able to clear till the last phase of the exam so i j- i just wanted to make sure that uh, the overall picture you will not uh, lose the overall 
picture you will have a holistic approach uh, your aim and goal sh- will not uh, will not be clearing the preliminary examination alone so o- i wanted you to have all those points in your mind uh, i am sure that if you are a candidate who have written multiple civil service exam uh, at one point or another you yourself have realized these mistakes that you have been making but if you are a fresher i am sure uh, this this mist uh, by this bit uh, will help uh, you people a lot so these are the common mistakes uh, candidates do make sure that you don't um, do the same mistake i did or uh, my peers did so yeah now uh, before discussing the preliminary examination i will just quickly go through uh, the syllabus and pattern of the pre- uh, both preliminary and mains examination to just give an idea uh, or how mains examination will uh, um, is um, overlapping uh, or like how the mains examination is going to be and the subjects in mains examination will be overlapping with the preliminary examination uh, having that uh, that concept is very important course it will help you prepare uh, the general studies paper one preliminary examination with much confidence like you will feel less intimidated like you will not feel like you are wasting your time for a qualifying examination if you are preparing for both preliminary and mains examination parallelly you you can avoid that uh, tension that that you are not creating any redundancy and you are not doing any redundant work you are efficiently studying so uh, f- to drive that point i will just discuss uh, the syllabus and pattern of the preliminary examination and mains examination just quickly i won't take much time and then i will jump into the main uh, topic of this video which is uh, my insights on clearing the preliminary examination of this exam so if you are already bored and if you are finding this all this information useless you can just skip this part and just go to the anal- analysis part and i'm sure you that will be helpful so yeah so in the preliminary examination you have two papers two general studies paper general studies paper 1 and general studies paper 2 general studies paper 1 is the main topic of this video i will be discussing what what are the sil- what is the syllabus of general studies paper 1 how to prepare and what you can expect how to approach different questions all that will be covered in this video so uh, each uh, paper is of 200 marks and 2 hours each general studies paper 2 is of qualifying nature in the preliminary exemption the entire preliminary examination examination is kind of qualifying exam for the mains examination but still uh, in the preliminary examination you just need to score 33 percentage mark for general studies paper 2 it will not be counted uh, to determine the cut off mark uh, of a candidate that is if the if, if from if you if you score 100 percentage or 33 percentage it is same you don't have to score high marks for general studies paper you just have to make sure that you score more than 33 percentage marks once you score more than 33 percentage mark your general studies paper 1 will be uh, evaluated and it, its mark will be used to uh, see whether you uh, are above the cut off marks so that is how uh, preliminary examination happens and when you come to mains examination you have nine papers two language papers are of qualifying nature uh, you just need to score 25 percentage mark here so one paper is has to be english so that is paper b has to be english and paper a you can choose one language from the languages listed in the each schedule of the constitution uh, for certain states if i remember correct paper a can also be english uh, like northeastern states but i'm not sure you have to check uh, but for other people you have to choose one language and write uh, that language as paper a so for both paper a and a and paper b you have to score 25 percentage mark so once you sc- you have 25 percentage mark in paper a and paper b other papers will be evaluated and counted for merit so other papers uh, when I, uh, so other papers are one 
paper you have an essay paper you have to write two essay essays and out of many uh, essay topics uh, you have to pick two essay questions uh, from section a you have to choose one and from section b you have to choose one so you have to write two essays uh, so that paper also is 250 marks and each uh, each of these papers that is essay paper gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 are of uh, 3 hours du uh, 3 hours duration even the optional paper is of uh, is th uh, 3 hours duration so um, th th you have one essay paper then general studies you have four general studies paper general studies one paper includes indian heritage and culture history geography of the world and various aspects of society so that is how general studies one paper is designed and general studies two paper has governance constitution polity social justice and international relations so general studies three paper have technology economic development biodiversity environment security and disaster management and general studies four paper has ethics integrity and aptitude so you have four general studies paper then you have two optional paper uh, as i mentioned earlier you, you have many choice uh for optional paper like economics uh, geography public administration mathematics language you have you can pick languages so you have many options you can choose one option and uh, write two optional papers on the on that topic so uh, each paper is of 250 marks uh, so total there are nine papers and in this nine papers two are qualifying nature and you will uh, the other seven paper will be counted for merit so total written test marks will be 1750 then once you clear the cut off marks for the mains examination uh, you can appear for the personality test and for personality test you have 275 marks so total marks uh, will be 2025 uh, uh, 2025 marks so you uh, if you see uh, the first rank person usually comes around 55 percentage marks only so you can't score a huge uh, unlike other exams you can't score like 180 percent 90 percent mark you will uh, you will be awarded um, very um, uh, conservatively so you even the first rank person gets around 55 60 percent at max marks max so if you see um, um, in the general category the person coming in the last rank and the first rank person uh, the difference between their marks will be around 130 marks only so that that tight is the competition like every marks count for this mains examination so you have to prepare well for every ex every paper you can't just say you will concentrate on first three papers and you will just some um, some uh, uh, aim to score an average mark for the optional paper never do that every mark counts you have to prepare well for every paper so all these seven papers are equally important so the main point i wanted to discuss was if you see uh, the general studies paper 1 so this is the paper 1 sil syllabus for the preliminary examination just take a pause and look through the topics it is like current ev events of national importance history of india world geography physical uh, social economic geography of india world indian polity governance constitution political system panchayat raj economic and social development general issues on environment biodiversity climate change general science so if you read through the syllabus of the paper 1 you can see a lot of overlap happening between the general studies papers of mains examination and preliminary examination so you have to um realize that uh, mains examination is like an extension of this preliminary examination where you have to write detailed answer in preliminary examination you have mcqs even if you do if you know the concept and you are not very articulate or you are not able to write uh, um, few words passage few uh, um paragraphs on those topic you will be still be able to clear the preliminary examination but mains examination will check your in depth knowledge on the topic and your analysis uh, it will test your ability to um, write um, essays write um, short um, answers on a particular topic so it will test all that so you have to have in depth knowledge about different topics you should uh, you should 
have the writing skill also so this is the reason why i said prelim preparation and mains preparation should go uh, hand in hand like it should happen simultaneously you shouldn't ignore the mains uh, prepar preparation while preparing for preliminary examination so uh, the reason being since there is lot of overlap you will be um, wasting your uh, time you are you will be inefficiently studying uh, there will be a lot of redundancy so you don't want that you you if you want to make proper use of your time uh, prepare notes from the beginning itself when you read paper uh, just make notes for mains also once you identify that uh, this particular portion is relevant for the mains also just um, make sure that you take proper points so that that will be useful while forming an answer for a mains uh, exam so um, definitely there are uh, weightages and areas you should prioritize in both the exams in prelims and mains so uh, that comes uh, so that is the so a candidate should be very familiar with the pattern the weightages um, where to focus they should have a clear idea of uh, the previous year questions and the patterns so that uh, he will be able to prepare or sorry they will be able to prepare well for the exam so uh, yeah that is what i need to discuss this is a preliminary examination means examination so before going to the preliminary focusing on the preliminary examination uh, just uh, if you um, if you are a person who is not familiar with the mains examination definitely do a analysis uh, which uh, for the mains examination before starting your preparation like uh, the like the analysis i am doing for the prelims in this video so you should identify the patterns the areas where you should give more focus or the areas you should prioritize over others other topics you, sh you should have a clear understanding before start pre uh, preparing things because you will be reading the newspaper for prelims preparation anyway uh, if you are preparing seriously then um, you will be able to uh, once you have the clear understanding what all questions comes for the mains you will be able to identify the news um, that is relevant for mains examination and you will be able to extract the points from that news very fast if you are well versed with the syllabus of the mains examination previous year questions and um, patterns that um, usually come for the exam so yeah um, I'm not doing the mains analysis here maybe um, I'll think of doing another video later if there is demand uh, I will be focusing on the uh, preliminary examination in this video but I can't stress enough to um, or emphasize enough to uh, say you shouldn't be hand uh, focus, uh, you shouldn't compartmentalize this uh, mains exam preparation and prelims preparation it should happen simultaneously to have it should happen together so yeah that is the main point so i'll just go through the pattern and weightage ones i took this graph from byju's uh byju's website so they have created a good graph which gives an overall idea about what is the weightage of various topics that comes for preliminary e examination so if you see they have categorized it as history geography polity economy science and technology environment and current affairs so i have a problem with this categorization so if you uh, I personally i i have a opinion that if you categorize this current affairs as a separate one um, your preparation style or you the way you prepare for prelims will be entirely wrong so i will explain that point later while analyzing the paper so just understand that uh, this is how a rough uh, pattern weightage will look like for prelims so if you see um, uh, initial in the initial years in like in 2016 they have marked high number of questions from to uh, current uh, current affairs and very little questions from say geography uh, geography and say science and technology and all so if you take this year 
economic there there were a lot of questions from economy and science and technology and you uh, different patterns was were like this like and if you come to 2000 year 2022 and 2023 as you, you can see that more or less the distribution has become equal like equal number of questions are coming from different uh, categories that is actually really good for the candidate so they don't have to worry that if you prepare well for a particular category um, in that year questions will be very less from that particular topic since every topic is important you can uh, prioritize every topic uh, and score well for the examination you don't have to worry that that year the um, lot of questions will come from the area that you find usually difficult so uh, the uh, the distribution is getting more or less equal so that is good if you see the pattern so these are the uh, weightages and pattern for the preliminary examination so if you see general studies paper can be categorized into static and dynamic so sta by static i mean the knowledge you can get from the books the knowledge that will be static like it it is not changing with years so even if you are preparing today or like 2 years later or 2 years before all the knowledge that is there in the books will be constant right that is the static part of this uh, general studies you have a standard set of books uh, that you should depend uh, to uh, um, cover the static part of this examination then there is dynamic portion the dynamic portion uh, by dynamic i mean the knowledge you get from newspaper magazines and internet websites these are constantly changing source source of information uh, newspaper covers lot of static portion also so i will discuss about that later in this video so uh, you can roughly categorize uh, this general studies paper into two static and dynamic uh, so if you see uh, there are a set of standard textbooks you should complete uh for preparing uh for if you are seriously preparing for general studies paper it will give you a foundation so if you are not good with geography so if you are not good with say uh world map or if you are not good with world uh, indian history y the, you should go through the standard textbooks i'll i will show you the standard uh, textbooks now uh, just in just few minutes uh but um, you shouldn't skip this uh, standard textbooks you should cover as early as possible so that you will have a very good foundation and with that foundation you can read newspaper in a efficient manner also so if for a person who is very good with uh, the geography of india will be able to um, read newspaper more clearly and efficiently and make notes um uh in a better manner i would say so um so uh, that is one advantage so you should aim to um cover the standard textbooks as early as possible and as i said earlier don't think that um you will first cover the static portion then come to the dynamic portion at least you should be reading newspaper daily even if you haven't completed static portion even if you haven't um completed uh, the stand all the te standard textbooks so the reason being as i said earlier uh, if you start to skip this newspaper what happens is you will um you will um the current affairs topics or the data that is there will keep on mounting and ultimately you will not be able to cover the newspaper properly you will be forced to depend on summaries which is again a very bad or poor method to cover the current affairs i will exp uh, that will be that part will be more clear to you while i finish the analysis of the paper of the prelimin preliminary paper uh, i will explain that part clearly uh, in the later part of this video so yeah 
roughly there is two we, we can div, uh, di divide the entire exam into static and dynamic part and static part ha uh, should be covered using standard textbooks and dynamic part should be covered using newspapers magazines uh, including frontline down to earth pib uh, such things publications uh, and internet websites by internet websites i mean wikipedia say vigaspedia uh, even pib uh can be dependent uh, dependent uh, then there are other websites also ccrt website um that you can use to cover topics uh, then uh, such things so such websites are all uh, useful again um there is a tendency for candidates to uh, take up lot of sources and make the content so vast that it is al al almost impossible to co cover the entire thing so don't do that just stick to some standard sources and cover that first so if you are getting too intimidated like you have lot to study you have lot to cover just uh, be patient and just let me complete the analysis part and you will feel much you will have very good clarity and you will have much confidence Uh, to prepare for this examination so uh, to cover all the books standard books i will be using some references i'm just going to google uh, the standard book list um, for upsc exam preparation and show you um, first few top results uh, i'm not recommending any of this websites uh for any other purpose so um, i'm just randomly i have randomly picked you results that came on the top so um so so this is a site called insights on india um it's a, fa a famous um upsc preparation portal so uh, they have a book list uh, for the mains preparation so they have specified lot of books i'm not going through the entire list you can just pause and see uh the list there is they have mentioned many books for ancient history and medieval india then therefore art and culture they have listed few books um including the ccrt website uh, they have listed then if you see mainly they have listed ncrt textbooks and uh Um, some standard textbooks like for ancient india r s sharma's book and for medieval india the sajish chandra's book so similarly they have listed many books uh, for post independence modern indian history world history indian society geography um polity governance social justice international relations economy ecology science and technology agriculture disaster and disaster management internal security and for ethics so they have listed uh, all the books that are needed for uh, mains preparation so i i didn't i didn't see any separate list, uh, list for prelim preparation uh, in this website but i think if you have covered the entire uh, these entire standard textbooks they have mentioned for mains you are all set for prelims you don't have to uh look for any other list that is specific for prelims you just need to uh focus on current affairs uh from uh, that the dynamic part you ha you you have to focus uh, that part along with the standard textbooks so but if you uh, see if you uh, look at another website uh, this is byju's website they have uh, given a separate list for prelim prelims preparation i will just stop here you can just take a look and then they have given a separate list for mains preparation so if you see if you compare both the list you can see lot of overlaps happening most of them have uh, recommended the same standard textbooks only so uh, maybe here they have world atlas included in the geography i didn't see that there so similarly uh, there are slight changes uh, there are small small changes uh, you can you can i am not saying one is good over the other you just pick up few standard textbook for these topics and thoroughly go through the, those books and complete it so that is the only thing i have to say so i am not aiming to give you a complete um, guidance 
for studying the static books and um, helping you clear the examination so i am not aiming at that i am just trying to give you a general guidance that you need to have for clearing this examination so uh, when you see india struggle for independence bivin chandra i don't uh, there is you just have to go through that book and read through that thing there is no other special uh, help that you will require if you know english well um, you will be able to go through that book and complete it otherwise and uh, i am not saying uh, no one can help um, uh, you in covering this topic especially for history geography and polity Uh, there are a lot of materials available in the internet that you can depend to complete i'm planning to um, say do videos on each separate topics maybe at later stage if time allows uh, until then all i can say is just you have to cover the static textbooks with the help of others and other sources so probably i will do videos on these topics one by one um in my own manner i i i won't say that is the best thing or anything you can depend on any source uh, as you please so these are the standard textbooks i will show just one more uh, so this is this is an academy they have also given a separate textbook a list for preliminary examination i will just you can pause and take a note and then you have a separate book list for mains examination so there are a lot of overlaps happening uh, you just uh, select any of this standard sources and uh, go through it and complete the preparations so complete the static part that that's all i have to say uh, for this video and while discussing the uh, discussing 2023 questions uh, i will for sure um, include some guidance that um that will be useful to cover these static textbooks so anyway that is the uh, book list part so i just wanted to show you some book so if you if this is not clear i will just zoom you just have to uh, to get this book list you just have to type uh, book list for upsc preparation that that uh, you will get the google results and you can get uh, these pages from google results itself so yeah um for the book list now uh, to the uh, main part of this video uh, so which is um, the analysis so i'll be uh, going through 2023 general studies paper 1 um i'll be using um uh, that as uh my source uh, to recommend you what you should focus and uh, what you should uh, what you should prioritize what you shouldn't prioritize and how you should read newspapers how you should study st- static textbooks and what all tips you can use to uh find answers for mcq questions uh what all tricks that you can use even even when you are not familiar with the information given all the tips and tricks all the uh, uh, exam preparation strategies i'll be discussing all that while going through this paper 2023 general studies one paper so by the time i finishes uh the, this entire paper i am sure you will have a clarity uh, on how to prepare for this preliminary uh, paper and what all questions you can expect and what all type of questions you can expect and how you should uh, read newspaper uh, and how you should um, learn static portion to uh answer these questions answer these tough questions that appear for preliminary examination and score uh, more than uh, the cut off marks so it will be going to be a really lengthy video i'm sure but i'm sure it will be useful uh, for all the beginners all the p- people who are struggling with this general studies paper 1 
So before beginning with general studies paper one, I just want to uh, say a few words on general studies paper two. So general studies paper two involves comprehension and some logical reasoning, mathematics like questions. So I have done few uh, pre uh, previous year questions in my channel itself. So my advice, if you are if you have difficulty, if you are not having a maths background or if you are not having an engineering background, probably you will be uh, finding it uh, finding the CSAT exam very difficult. So if if that is the case, my advice will be to go through entire previous say ten years of previous year CSAT papers and do each problems. So I have already covered five, six years of uh, CSAT papers in my channel itself. If you want more, do comment under the video. Um, I will uh, try to do it. Uh, but um, if you have, if you go through my videos, if you go through each questions, I have um, discussed in detail how to approach such questions and solve such questions. Even if you don't know anything about uh, that concept. So, uh, you, I am sure going through all those six years of uh, question paper in my channel, you'll have a good idea on the logical reasoning and mathematical question part. And I haven't done anything on the comprehension part. For comprehension, uh, there is um, a few uh, techniques that you should be familiar with. You can find um, videos in YouTube channel that discuss such uh, techniques like what you uh, what they mean by um, inference uh, what they mean by um, uh, um, critical idea all those words you should be familiar with and how to read a comprehension fast how can you answer certain question, big passages in a very short time all those techniques will be uh, is discussed in a lot of videos in the YouTube you can find it I'm not an expert in that area but if you haven't find any good videos and if you want me to uh, do video on that part uh, do comment I will try to do video on that also but uh, other than that um, I have covered I have done a lot of videos on that logical reasoning and mathematical comprehension part uh, I'm sure you will be um, really you will benefit a lot if you are not familiar with those things so that is about general studies paper 2 so general studies paper 1 is the main villain for a lot of people so i will be spending my rest of the video on the analysis of this general studies paper 1 and the techniques tips tricks and all to solve this exam so please show if you are def if you are struggling with this general studies paper one and if you haven't scored really good in the general studies paper one or if you are a complete beginner uh, in this examination please show patience and sit through this video i'm sure you will benefit a lot uh, by this video i'll be discussing entire all the hundred questions uh, i will not skip any questions uh, each question for each questions i will be discussing a lot of points so uh, it will be lengthy but it will i am sure it will be useful so yeah without wasting much time i i will start with the question number 1 